Hello, Mr. and Mrs. Brookings Harbor and all the fishing boats at sea. I'm Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. And And this this is the Insider Insider Report. Report. So let your ears do the walking as we fill you in on what's going on in the Brookings Harbor area and beyond. beyond. Well, hello, 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 and welcome to this week's show that keeps you in the know. Hiya, Kat. Welcome back. Hi, Bruce. <laughs> it was hell week last week it, for it you there. It was, yeah. and then uh, this was yeah. closing weekend for the vagina monologues. It was just a crazy weekend in general, and I'm just happy to be here, and I'm happy to have actually gotten like eight hours of sleep last night. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah so happy about that. But yeah, no, um, we had closing weekend for that show. We sold out Saturday and Sunday. This, and this week, yeah, yeah. This weekend, mm-hmm. okay, great. That was Super. awesome. Unfortunately for Jason, he wasn't able to go be in Tombstone's opening weekend because he kind of broke his arm. Yeah, that's what we were talking about. I saw so, the post on Facebook yeah. and it's like, uh oh. Yeah, so like working around like ER visits and stuff. Right. I mean, we managed to get like the Brookings half of our events for the weekend squared away, but my poor dude's got a yeah. uh, broken wing, my poor baby bird. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah. So we'll see. Uh, he's got some follow up appointments and stuff. We'll see what what kind of recovery. Get him or, Yeah, it's uh, in a bad spot, like you yeah, were telling upper me. Upper arm. Yeah, upper it's not arm like, like forearm well, where you just cast you it. Cast it's it, all yeah. good. So yeah, we'll have to see right what, what we're shoulder. doing about that. Jeez. So yeah. Well, good luck for him on yeah. that there. And the Tombstone Show, we'll find out. We'll keep you guys updated as, you know, as, as we, we don't know. Them. Yeah, we have no yeah. idea how they're going to roll with this or anything. Absolutely. But we'll find out because that's what we do. And Cat will have the inside scoop all the way. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. And <laughs> so, yes, yeah. best of luck to them as they get yeah. that figured out. Yes. So that's what you did this weekend. And otherwise, the show, then the. Yeah. yeah that was closing this weekend. weekend. That all went good. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like I said, yeah. two sold out houses Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Amazing crowds, just amazing performances from my actors. And just, yeah, everyone was so emotional at the end, as you are after any show. But just, oh, yeah. yeah. And the support from the community. For the show good. has been absolutely tremendous. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Since you guys started this whole thing, you've just been beautiful. It's yeah. like everybody's really picking up on it. Picking up like, steam. What's going to happen is you're going to get need to get it bigger. We got to get a bigger building. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We're having some meetings this spring to talk about what we're doing. Yeah. So. But that'd be yeah. great. Yeah. I can see it, though. I can see you really developing this into something good. Hey, there's people with, you know, yeah. There's grants and all that good stuff for exactly. stuff that you're doing. Exactly. Good now that, yeah, doing. yeah. Now that we have it, uh, it's another new development, a new, uh, new 501c3 status, like completely like a staff. I saw that everything. post too. Yeah, it's, good. We have a paper we can show people. It's yep. official. Yeah. Now, so that's cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. So it. that means, yeah, so many more opportunities are opening Absolutely. up. Absolutely. Yeah. I know that much about it, doing the events and everything yeah. like that. Yeah. 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 Well, how about you and Junior? Oh, my goodness. It was St. Patty's Day weekend. And uh, yes, we had fun. And, and, yeah, we, you know what I did this first time? Never even heard of it in school or anything. Mm. Leprechaun traps. I saw other people like looking around shops and stuff for like leprechauns to make leprechaun traps because uh-huh. of something that they did in school or something. They, and I never <laughs> saw it in my school when I was in the 60s uh-huh. and 70s. And yeah, I never saw it during that time. But yeah, I mean, I ran apparently, into at least one grandparent on. looking for like a stuffed leprechaun or something to trap the leprechaun. It was hilarious. I was like, this is because of a school thing. I'm like, it's because of school. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, okay. <laughs> Yeah, it was, yeah, I never seen it before, but it was really cool. And Fun. we did it, and we made it, and we got pictures and everything of it and posted them on Facebook and all that good stuff. Mm-hmm. But yeah, Tori, um, she, uh, her and Lucas and Harmony, they were all excited about it. And I said, Junior, we're going to go make some, you know, Cute. some leprechaun traps. And he's like, what? And he's like, yeah, he hadn't never heard of it either. So it was really neat. And we all, they all had little traps. And then a couple mm-hmm. other kids came over. Yeah, Tyler and Anna, nice. Annie came over. So we had traps all around. And nobody caught a leprechaun, but hey, you know what? <laughs> That's what happens. They're, they're tricky. They're, they're tricky, tricky little, little buggers, yeah. yeah. But you know, I, I didn't have the chance, the opportunity, because I had no idea about it to get a little creative myself on it. But next year, I'm like, I'm already planning how to trap. Got to get a leprechaun, first of all. <laughs> yes. Well, step one, acquire yes, step leprechaun. One, acquire a leprechaun, <laughs> and then I'll take it from there. Right. <laughs> Go. No, it was pretty neat. But we did that, yeah, and watched the race and enjoyed it. St. Paddy's Day was always me and my dad's. That was our holiday because mm-hmm. we got Norwegian, Irish in us and stuff like that. We're Celtic and mm-hmm. we loved it. We love it. I wore my kilt Saturday night, not Sunday because it was a little cold, but I wore it Saturday night. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Saturday was the nice one. Yeah, that was the nice one. And that's when we did our little St. Patty's party anyway. Totally. So it was cool. Yeah. And everybody had a blast. Oh, so, yeah, like every, it, that it was a beautiful weekend. I saw tons of people out and about. I hope everybody so nice. had fun. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, How can you not have fun in that sunshine, right? No doubt. 
Oh. All right. Well, hope everybody else got out there and had a good weekend. <laughs> I hadn't seen Cat for a week. Sorry, we had to, <laughs> we had to catch up. <laughs> no, catch up. <laughs> hey, before we get going, though, we'd like to thank Oregon South Coast Fishermen, otherwise known as the Castaway, Just the Jeweler, and Oregon Coast VIP Marketing for sponsoring the Insider Report. If you'd like to sponsor our show or one of the other fine shows at KCIW, just go to kciw.org and you will be on your merry way. Mm-hmm. Hey, let's get going with the music schedule so we can let these yeah. people know what's going on. Hey, the Elk Valley Casino is having some events coming up. First at the Betty Green Event Center. On the 29th, it's going to be Bad Moon Rising. That is a CCR tribute band at 8 p.m. Then on the 30th, one of these nights, an Eagles tribute happening at 8 p.m. And then over at their Warriors Bar and Grill, all events starting at 7.30 p.m. On the 22nd and 23rd, they're going to have music by Jesse Mead. And on the 29th and 30th, music by Steve Nelson. Yes, indeed. And the Italian guys are playing on the 29th at Kuntai from 6 to 8. And then Mike Powell is playing on the 22nd at Checco Brewing. Music there running from 6 to 8 p.m. Yep, I get him and his son's bloodline had a... Busy weekend this Sunday. Had a great one uh, that there at the Fat Irish. That's cool. Hey, Danielle Duran and Ohana on Tuesdays. You catch them at the open mic at Oxenfree, 8 to 11. And then on Thursdays, there's an open mic at Chetco Brewing Company from 5 to 8. And then on the 23rd, they'll be at the Grange Chamber of Commerce Resident Meet and Greet from 12 to 5. All That's right. Fine. And then PA and T. Roy on the 22nd are going to be playing at Misty Mountain Brewing. Music there running from 6 to 8. Yep. And Stephanie Latore and the Reburbs, you will catch them on the 22nd at Inateca from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And then some music here for Long Goddard. He's playing on the 29th at Misty Mountain Brewing from 6 to 8. And then on the 30th, he'll be at the Stage Lights Spaghetti Feed Fundraiser happening at the Checo Grange. That's running from 4 to 7 p.m. Yeah, very cool. Hey, and the Tortuga Mexican Restaurant, music runs from 6 to 8. On the 22nd, they got Jonathan Foster. On the 23rd, we got Yvonne Herzog. On the 29th, Greg Russell. And on the 30th, Honest Labor. All righty. And then Cisco and Daltry are playing on the 27th at the Checo Activity Center. Music there running from 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. And then Cisco's playing solo on the 23rd and the 30th at the Brookings Harbor Farmer's Market. Music there runs from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Yes, indeed. And then at the Inateca, we've got on the 15th, the Spence Brothers Blues Band, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. And on the 22nd, once again, Stephanie Latour and the Reverbs from 8 to 10. And finally, at Misty Mountain Brewing on the 22nd, can't say it enough, (laughs) P.A. and T. Roy are playing music (laughs) from 6 to 8 p.m. They are. So there we go. That's the scoop on the music, and I'm... Working on that this next couple of weeks, so we'll have another big full two-pager lineup. Here. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'm uh, sure there's going to be weeks. plenty happening in April as well. <laughs> I'm telling you. Yes, indeed. I already see it. Okay. And now for some more events coming up from the Lucky 7 Casino. They're presenting Jamie O'Neill. This is going to be on the 23rd at 8 p.m. This is an evening of music with singer-songwriter Jamie O'Neill. And this is an intimate double acoustic event. It's happening at the Lucky 7 Casino and hotel for one night only. Doors open at 7 p.m., show starts at 8 p.m., and you can get tickets online at eventbrite.com, or you can get them at the casino, and you got to be 21 years or older to attend this event. That's right. Hey, and the Tsunami Resiliency Festival 60th Anniversary Memorial will be happening at the 101 Citizens Dock Road in Crescent City on the 23rd from 1 p.m. to 8 p.m. as a long day. This march marks the 60th anniversary of the devastating 1964 tsunami that struck much of the western coast, but was most destructive to their little town of Crescent City. Rebuilding was an immense undertaking, but their tenacious community got to work, and in celebration of that strong-willed spirit, they look forward to gathering the community for the Tsunami Resiliency Festival. They got an order of events here going on. From 1 to 3 p.m., they got artifacts and stories at the Del Norte County Historical Society's Museum located at 577 H Street. And then from 1 p.m. to 5 p.m., they got the Art Walk at Crescent City Harbor going on. And then 3.30 to 5 p.m., Survivor Stories at Along the Waterfront. And then 5.30 to 8, Stories of the Sea and Sea Shanties at Porta Pines Brewing Company. So they got right. the hometown there involved on that. Yeah, that's a major anniversary yes, for them. Yes, indeed. Yeah, 60 years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, the Curry Public Library, located in Gold Beach, is presenting the Haneke Castle Band with Tristan Claridge and Christopher Lewis. This is happening on the 26th of March at 5.30 p.m., and you can join the Haneke Castle Band for a free performance. Together with Tristan, Christopher, and the other members of the band, 
The Hanukkah Cassell Band creates acoustic sound that retains the integrity and spirit of the Scottish tradition. This performance is offered in collaboration between Curry Public Library and the Pistol River Concert Association. And you can join or renew your PRCA membership to re- receive reserved seating for this event. Yes, indeedy. Hey, an Oregon women in business and a meeting at the Rice Bowl on the 27th at 5 p.m. Women in Business March is an evening of connection and resources. You're invited to join the friendly group out in the community in these activities. Small business success story, roundtable introductions from all attendees, Google review session for local small businesses. Doors open at 5 and the meeting starts at 5.30. Refreshments are provided. However, menu items and beverages are available for purchase. No RSVP necessary. Just grab a friend and come on out to an informative and fun evening with other women in Beneath. That sounds good, yeah. And now it's time for quotes from famous people with Cousin Bruce. Yeah, speaking of the ladies, here's a few quotes from poet Elizabeth Barrett Browning. She was born March 6, 1806. She says, Light tomorrow with today. I like that one. Light tomorrow with today. You're something between a dream and a miracle. Then she says, never say no when the world says I. And last but not least, silence is the best response to a fool. There you go. I hope you enjoyed this week's quotes from Elizabeth Barrett Browning with Cousin Bruce. Till next week, hey, have a great one. There you go. Sometimes there's no words is what'll cut it. Yeah. Hey, you know, (laughs) going back to the tsunami thing, it just reminded me that um, we missed, I guess, the one that happened up in Port Orford in the 60s. My dad, I believe it was Port Orford. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, where they had a really bad one there or whatever in the mm-hmm. 60s, I think so. But wherever it was, I, it was along this, the Oregon coast. A lot of communities were affected. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it was when I was a little baby or whatever. And my mm-hmm. dad said that water wasn't looking right. He wasn't digging it. And we left. And they had mm-hmm. a big old tsunami came through that. I have to check and see if it was nice. people up. I have to look and see when that was. Yeah, but I know as a baby, I remember him telling me that story. I was like, yeah. he goes, yeah, Bruce, you know, you know, we went through one, or almost did, <laughs> mm-hmm. escaped one by one night. And mm-hmm. I was like, whoa, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. good yep. call. Quite likely it's that one then. It's yeah, funny that tsunami, when we said that, it flashed back that yeah. story. And I was like, ooh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not, as, not as much of a robust warning system back then as there is now. So, yeah. yeah I'll absolutely. Google it and maybe I can get more info. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. All right. Well, the Elk Valley Casino is presenting Bad Moon Rising. This is a tribute to Credence Clearwater Revival. It's happening on the 29th at 8 p.m. And they're saying, get ready to journey down the Mississippi Delta with Bad Moon Rising, the tribute to Credence Clearwater Revival. And Bad Moon Rising recreates CCR's rootsy heavy bayou groove. Tickets are on sale now at etix.com. It's $20 presale or $25 the day of the event. Doors open at 7 p.m. The show starts at 8 p.m. And you have to be 21 or older to attend. Yeah. And you know, one thing I noticed here is a lot of tribute bands coming around. Being in the paper, you know, I, I'm, I'm putting the show together and everything. I see them all coming. This this last couple of years, big, mm-hmm. big. Uh, it's like a whole lot of them coming through and everything, which is great. We're getting them to come through here and everything. Uh-huh. It's like really neat. If you can't see the... The real deal, you know what I mean? Because they're gone. Well, yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> the band no longer yeah. exists. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's always right. good to have the, the ones because usually they're right on the money and everything. Yeah. But yeah, I just noticed that there's a big, uh, yeah. Yeah, it's almost like they found a market. Yeah. People who like nostalgia or something. Or the, or the casinos just started realizing, hey, there's a good, or that. you know, get, bringing some good yeah. stuff here. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Cool. Whatever it is, I'm glad they're doing it. It's great. Mm-hmm. Hey, the Family Resource Center of the Redwoods, located at 494 Pacific Avenue in Crescent City, is presenting the FRC Easter Ex- Egg Extravaganza. This is happening on the 29th from noon to 3 p.m. The public is invited for their annual Easter Egg Extravaganza. The Easter Bunny will be there with a free egg hunt free crafts, free popcorn, and so much more. They'll also be fundraising with J.C.'s Arctic Blast and Snelling Snow Cones for $2. For more info on this event, you can call 707-464-0955. And then the Pistol River Concert Association is presenting the Muddy Souls at the Pistol River Friendship Club. That's at 24252 Carpenterville Frontage Road in Pistol River. This is happening on the 30th at 7.30 p.m., The Muddy Souls are a leading progressive jam grass band based in Eugene, Oregon, featuring original songs, improvisation, and vocal harmonies. Formed in 2018, the band has four albums of completely original music, 
and has played more than 150 shows across the Pacific Northwest, Northern California, and the Northeast, including festival sets at Freshgrass, Bridge City Bluegrass, Oregon Country Fair, and Wintergrass. Tickets are $20 in person at Wright's Custom Framing in Brookings and also at First Chapter Coffee House in Gold Beach. Oh, yeah. Hey, and speaking of this, this Stage Lights Musical Arts Community is doing that spaghetti dinner fundraiser at the Checo Grange Community Center at uh, Shopping Center Avenue in Harbor. Saturday, March 30th from 4 to 6 p.m., the public is invited to come out and support Stage Lights by enjoying a delicious spaghetti dinner with salad and garlic bread. Beverages and desserts will also be available for purchase, featuring musical entertainment provided by Alan Goddard. Tickets on sale now at Wright's Custom Framing, Eventbrite.com, and from one of their board members. Yeah, you can get one of their board members you can get a ticket from. For more information or to reserve a meal, send an email to stagelightsmusicalarts at gmail.com, or you can call Kim Devine at 541-412-7273. And they say, feel free to send a check to Stage Lights if you want to sponsor it or support it. And you can't come to it, you can send a check to P.O. Box 6993, Brookings, Oregon, and indicate how many dinners you are purchasing and the names of those attending. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. And and I suppose if you want to know how much those tickets cost, again, you can contact them at stagelightsmusicalarts at gmail.com or call Kim at 541-412-7273 so you know how much to make out that check for. Yeah. And then I've got one more week at least to save that one. I will find out. So next go. week when we do it, I can cover that basis on that one. Thank you for pointing that out. Uh-huh. I knew there was something funky Absolutely. about that one. <laughs> hey, the Brookings Nazarene Church, they're located at 1600 Checo Avenue, are inviting the public to join them and celebrate hope with some of your neighbors and friends. This is happening Easter Sunday. And when does it start? 1030 a.m. And hey, now it's time for a bit of weird history with Bushwhacker Bruce. Right, good day, Jack. Good day, mates. Bushwhacker Bruce here, and welcome to this week's bit of weird history for your knowledge pleasure. Did you know a soup kettle was the only casualty in a war? It's true. Here's the story. It was the year 1784. The Netherlands was split in two parts: the south, which was controlled by Austria, and the north, which was free and had formed their own republic. But the northern Netherlands had closed off two important trading ports, Ghent and Antwerp. While the north prospered economically, the south was angry at this. And the Austrian emperor grew tired of this, and he gave the northerners an ultimatum. He said, either give them access to the ports, or war will be declared. But the Dutch ignored the warning, so Austria sent out three warships. Well, since the northern Netherlands were neutral in any conflict, the emperor expected to seize the ports easily. But... A small Dutch anchored ship called Den Dolphin fired a shot towards the Austrians. The ship that was fired upon, Le Louis, was unarmed, but not the kettle on the deck, which was full of soup. After this, they fired a warning cannon. The soup-covered Austrians were so scared and immediately surrendered to the Dutch. The only casualty of this brutal war was one soup kettle and all the soup it held within. To add insult to injury, the Dutch also captured one of Austria's nearby fortresses, and the emperor, now furious with his army, declared war on the northern Netherlands. But nothing important really happened. His fleet had just surrendered after one shot. They were not intimidating anymore, and they were to be taunted by the Dutch for years to come. In all happy note, the countries did sign a treaty the following year, and something economically good happened to both of them. I wonder if that is where the term... Soup's on came from. Hope you enjoy this week's Beard Away History with yours truly, Bushwhacker Bruce. Till next time, keep it real, but always keep it weird. Yeah. Yeah. Very fun, very fun. I like a good food themed one. <laughs> <laughs> Always tickles me. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. All right. The Curry Public Library, located in Gold Beach, also is presenting Memory Cafe Curry. This is an ongoing event, and they meet the third Wednesday of every month from 10 30 a.m. to noon at the Curry Public Library in Gold Beach. And they ask you to register for the program. They ask that you email memorycafe at cplib.net. Or give them a call at 541-247-7246. A memory cafe is an informal social gathering for older adults living with memory loss and their care partners. Care partners may include but are not limited to spouses, siblings, children, or friends whose social lives are often just as affected as their loved ones. 
Memory cafes are designed to be a casual, stress-free gathering to allow care partners the opportunity to relax and socialize with others in a similar situation. Memory Cafe Curry will be staffed by a qualified social service provider, library staff, and volunteers. Yes, indeed. And the VFW Legacy Bricks fundraiser is going on here still. VFW Post is raising money to fix its building, upgrade its heating, electricity, and improve its landscape. They have raised approximately 30000 but need another 20000 to complete the work. They are selling legacy bricks that will highlight the entrance of the building featuring messages of memory to veterans respected by their loved ones. Each brick will cost a donor $100, and every purchased brick will be laid professionally in front of the post for everyone to observe. They will also conduct more yard sales, provide meals for a nominal donation, and sponsor other groups and their activities. Now, once the building is completed, the VFW Post 966 will serve the veterans in the community of Brookings. They are active in the Brookings community, a member of the Brookings Chamber of Commerce, and supporter of the Brookings City Council. They support the veterans, providing ceremonies, funerals, and memorials. The VFW Post 966 is a 501c19, a nonprofit group with all members being veterans of foreign wars. Veterans Post 966 is located at 507 Pacific Avenue in Brookings, right there next to the high school. Yes, indeedy. Right. And I see some work going on there every time I pass by. Oh, Look, yes, they're, yes. So they're going the, at it, that's them, for sure. Yeah, getting that building fixed mm-hmm. up, absolutely. They are. All right, KCIW is giving folks a chance to speak their mind on a new show called the KCIW Soapbox. Basically, KCIW is offering two minutes of airtime to anyone who has something to say. Now, of course, there are a few rules. No cussing. No slandering, no advertising, but other than that, folks can share what's on their mind. The studios open every Wednesday from 2 to 3 p.m. for people to come in and record their thoughts. Hey, <laughs> yes, indeed. I haven't heard one of those yet. I got to catch one of those. Yeah. A game night at the Whimsical Griffin on 615 Checo Avenue is by the Redwood Theater, Tuesdays and Fridays from 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. They got Magic the Gathering, Dungeons and Dragons. And board games. Now, speaking of that, they had the Harbor Game Con was the first last I this I weekend. I saw it at their bigger location at they moved to the Elks Lodge. Yeah, they were so at the Elks that, Lodge. Doing yeah, it. yeah, I we hope promoted that went it. well for them. Yeah, yeah, we promoted mm-hmm. it, but I was just curious as to how it went down. I didn't see. I haven't I've, heard from anybody yeah. yet, but but yeah, yeah, no, that was neat that they were expanding this year. So yeah, good, very good cool. for them. Made it more room. Yeah, and then we've got a pretty important PSA here for Meals on Wheels. They are still looking for volunteers. They're in need of volunteer drivers. They deliver about 75 hot meals daily to people who can't get to the Checo Activity Center for the daily meals that are served there. They have a harbor route and a Brookings route. This is a great opportunity for anyone out there who wants to give back to the community, be a friendly face, and deliver a hot meal and a little kindness to local homebound residents. Whether you're interested in doing this for just a day, a week, or a month, all volunteers are welcome. And if you would like to do that, you can contact Debbie Lutz at 714-423-9797. I can't stress enough the Meals on Wheels program provided by the Checo Activity Center. It's the only Meals on Wheels program that's available to the Brookings Harbor area. And it is such an important way for people to actually get nutrition needs needs met if they're homebound. So if you've got some time, I really advocate for signing up to drive for them. It's oh, yeah. a really good cause. It really, really is. So. I was just thinking, I'm glad we got to these PSAs, you know, mm-hmm. because our entertainment has been so filled up lately, mm-hmm. but, you know, so much that we haven't yeah. been able to get these PSAs, so it yeah. sounds good. And then uh, in an impromptu fashion, too, as a fundraiser for Meals on Wheels, Three Pennies teaming up with them to do a dinner theater night in June. We'll be getting more information about oh, that out soon as well. So, yeah, however you want to support the Meals on Wheels program, including and especially driving right now, Please call Debbie at 714-423-9797. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's about time to put another one of those in the insider to get another one of those going. Hey, the Brookings Harbor Boy Scouts of America scouting for new troop members. Boys and girls are invited. Troop 32 and Troop 4032 are now accepting new scouts as well as adults interested in volunteering. Scouts are able to join the troops from fifth grade to the age 17. Adults are able to volunteer as long as they're over 21 years old, are able to pass a background check, and willing to spend about an hour and a half completing a youth protection training course. They meet at the Scout Hall from 7 to 8.30 p.m. every Monday night, except on holidays. You can come meet the troops and learn more about what Scouts can help you achieve. Scout Hall is located at 414 Azalea Park Road in Brickings, Oregon. Troop 32 Scoutmaster is Mark Haglin at 541-661-2749. And Troop 4032, a Scoutmaster, Rebecca Wilson, 707-951-3647. 
And I noticed driving by there this weekend that they had a garage sale going on. I wish we would have known about because I would have could have got it on the air for them. But mm-hmm. I saw it there, and I hope they did good on that. And I'm gonna I'm gonna get a hold of Rebecca or whatever and say, hey, if you guys do that again, let me know so we can get some promo out there for you. Because yeah, but the one thing I did notice, there are quite a few scouts. I saw something else going on where they were unloading the trailer or something, and I saw quite a few scouts. So I'm good. I'm hoping that uh, yeah, more people are signing up. That's great. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. yeah. Good, good, strong scout group. That's okay. always good for the yep. community. All right, and then we've got time here for a couple more more information about this time the Fog and Fine Art Gallery. Located in Wright's Custom Framing and Art Supply at 810 Checo Avenue, Brookings, this gallery features 36 local artists in a variety of mediums and a classroom to inspire new and seasoned artists with workshops. Stop by and enjoy all that's new in the gallery. It's open from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. on Saturdays. And for more information on class offerings, painting demonstrations, and artists, you can always call 541 469 7900 or you can visit them on Facebook. It's at Wright's Custom Framing. Yes, indeed. And one more here. Brookings MS Self-Help Support Group. Conversation and support for people living with MS, multiple sclerosis. Joins others living with MS to talk, share experiences of successfully living and coping daily with MS, share information and resources in a positive atmosphere. Topics will focus on areas of interest to the group members. This group is for people with MS, family, friends, and caregivers. Please reach out prior to attending with an email to AudreyMS18 at AOL.com. You can also find them on Facebook at MS Walk and Rollers. Meetings will be the second Tuesday of the month at 11 a.m. at Checo Community Library Annex Building across the street from the library at 402 Alder Street in Brookings. And that's it. We better get out of here now. Mm. (laughs) Remember to please support and shop local. It's time to close us out this week's show. Before we go, I'd like to give a shout out to our fearless producer, Brother Tom, for all his great work making us look and sound good on the radio. I want to thank you all for tuning in to this week's Insider Report. And please make sure to tune in on a daily basis to KCIW 100.7 FM and listen to all the fine shows that they have to offer. You can also catch all the fantastic show podcasts, including the Insider Report, at KCIW.org. And while you're there, hey, check out the live streaming as well. Hey, until next week. This is Cousin Bruce Ellis. And I'm Kat Liddell. We are signing off, so keep it real and spread the love and the peace every chance you get. And hey, we'll we'll see see you out there. Bam! Look at us filling time. Yeah, (laughs) that's right. We did that just right. Music credits for the preceding show go to kciw.org slash credits.